18, verse 3 and 4. 1 Samuel 18, verse 3 and 4. Gen Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan took off the 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 rope that was on his him and gave it to David with his armor even to his sword and his own bow, bow and his belt. Amen. The text that we just read speaks of a moment where the father of David sent David so that he would go and check the situation with his brethren, uh, his brothers. And the concern of the father is always this. So it's the same. And to know how is what what is the situation of the brothers of David? How his children are doing? What is the situation that they are living? It was a moment of war. So a moment of battle and war. And the older brothers of David, they have enlisted to participate in the war. And we know that in a war, anything can happen. When we are in war, we can kill, but we can also be killed. And that was the concern of the father in knowing what was the situation of his children. So the father, he calls David and says, David, go there and see what is the situation of your brothers, how my children are doing. And we know that everything in life, prophetically, and David, in what he didn't fail, he is a symbol of the Lord Jesus. So Jesse here is, it represents the Father, our Father, who is God. So God in his eternity, he wanted to um, uh, take knowledge or be aware about what was happening to the children of Israel and Jesse's children, the chosen people of the Lord. Those are being generated by that Father. And Jesus, here represented by David, he then is sent to check the situation in which uh, his brothers are the children of the Father. And we know that God is, uh, is omnipresent, is all-knowing. He knows everything, all things. But the purpose of that mission, the purpose of that visit, was not only to know the situation in which his brothers were, but through David, his brothers would be delivered from death, delivered from the judgment, and be delivered from a great humiliation they were, that they were going through. Because on those days, the army of the Philistines, they had a hero there. They had a giant, and that giant was challenging. Uh, he was not challenging, challenging Saul, the king Saul. They were not challenging the children of Israel. They were not challenging men. They were confrontating. He was confrontating. He was challenging the God of Israel. So the, the enemy was humiliating the children of Israel. And he said, isn't there a man there? Is there isn't there any man capable of fighting? Don't you have an, a hero? Don't you have a champion? Isn't there in your midst somebody that who is uh, courageous enough to fight with me and to defeat me? In the Bible it says, my brethren, that for many years, many days, this confrontation, this challenge, this humiliation continued. 
And many times the people of the Lord go through this to a, com a humiliation, a challenge. Sometimes I'm going through this, or a brother or a sister is going through this, or the entire church is going through this. The chosen of God may be going through this. And the enemy rises up to confront, and they may say, isn't there a champion, is there in your midst a hero? Isn't there a, a valiant soldier? And the Bible says that the entire people of God remain silent. Because they looked, and there wasn't there in their midst uh, a valiant soldier. Isn't there? There wasn't there a uh, hero. There was not in their midst. Some other would be able to um, destroy that, that challenge. That was not only against them, but against their God, against our God. And it didn't exist. It didn't exist in the in the midst of the people of Israel that would had the means to do this. That's why the Lord says there, and Jesse said, go there. God thought, I'm going to send a hero. I'm going to send a, a bold soldier. I'm going to send someone there to remove this uh, challenge from before my people. And Father Jesse does that. He sends David. And he's, it, he told him, go there and check how my children are. So when David leaves the presence of the Father, the Bible says that he departed with uh, a bag. And this bag had a couple of elements. There was bread. If, I, um, if I'm not mistaken, there was also cheese. The brother can also search for it just to help me out. And he goes there with those resources in the, on his hands. And then he takes uh, the food to his brothers. And then later, he departs to remove the challenge that was uh, before the Jewish people. And if we look at the situation of Jesus, it is pretty similar. Jesus and the people of God at that time, he was being oppressed. He was being enslaved, is being confronted. So then God sent Jesus. And Jesus, when he goes to visit his brothers and sisters, he doesn't go there with empty hands. He carries with him the food that was given by the Father to bring to his brothers and sisters. He brings the word. He brings the bread. Remember that Jesus multiplied bread and fish. He speaks of. There were, uh, instead of the bag, there were two more types of food roasted grain and ten bread. So it was cheese, roasted grain, and bread. And Jesus came, and the first thing that he did was to face the, the crowd, using the resources that, by, that were given by the Father, or his word. So he presents himself as bread to give life to those who believe. So he strengthens. He carries the food. Jesus came to give this, this food. The food that it comes from eternity, which is the word, which is the knowledge of the plan of God. So when Jesus came, the situation of his uh, brethren, the path that his brethren were uh, tracking, the, situ the spiritual situation of Israel, the challenge against the God of Israel, because the land of Israel had been taken over. It was invaded and was conquered by the enemies. So then Jesus comes there to restore, to restitute, to bring back uh, man into the project of God for the life of that people. And at that time, there was not a single man that could remove that confrontation, that challenge. There was no man that could defeat the giant. 
defeat Goliath, defeat the flesh, defeat death. Because whoever faced Goliath would surely die. He was the most powerful enemy, more powerful than any soldier of Israel. So then Jesus goes there with that mission, with the mission of the Father to defeat the greatest of the enemies, a giant. Remove from the life of man the greatest challenge, the greatest humiliation that man can go through. And what is the greatest challenge? What is the greatest humiliation that men can go through? You know what it is, my brethren? It's death. And the, one, the only one that is able to defeat death is the life. Because life is absence of death. That's why Jesus, when He comes, He says, I, he says, I am the life. So if I came to give life and life in abundance, it's the same thing did David. So David, he goes there, he uh, feeds his brethren, and goes there to face the giant and remove the confrontation that was there upon the people of Israel. The sentence of judgment, the condemnation, and death. And the word of the Lord says that he uses the resources that were not from Saul. He doesn't use the resources from men, but he uses what he had, what he brought with himself, which was what? It was garment of a pastor and a bag of a pastor. He says, I am a good shepherd. Uh, the good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. So David was there to defend the sheep. And it's interesting that the sheep, when David took care of the sheep, he didn't take care of the sheep that were his. David didn't have a sheep, didn't know that. The sheep of David were not his, they were his father's. So he was there taking care of the sheep of his father. And Jesus came exactly to do this, to take care of the sheep of his father. So then David he goes there to face a giant, and everyone knows this story. He goes to the river, he picks up five stones, and we know that those five stones, they represent the five means of grace, reading the word, prayer, early dawn, praise and fasting and when you when you look at the life of David you find all of those resources the means of grace to of, to defeat the enemy to defeat the giant to remove the challenge against the God of Israel that was there so here is an example for our lives how to remove the challenge of the giant that is being challenging our God how to remove the enemy, the death that is approaching us to humiliate men. It's using the resources of grace, the means of grace. It's going to the river. There is a song that says, I want to go to the river to drink of the water that jumps to eternal life. The name of this river is Jesus. No one knows this song here, do they? Living water. I want to be drink of you, Lord. <laughs> That's the one. That's the one. I want to eat of the bread. As God gave me this water and this bread are going to allow me to uh, reach uh, eternal Zion. So David uses the the means the means of grace, the ones that the brethren already mentioned. He used the word, and the word destroys the giant and removes the challenge that was against Israel. And Jesus did that 
throughout Jesus' ministry. He prayed, he fasted. And after praying for 40 days, he was fasting for 40 days. Jesus also fasted and prayed. And when Jesus goes to the Mountain of Olives, that's the only place that was written that. And after singing a song, they went to the Mount of Olives. So all the means of grace were there present in the life of the Lord Jesus. And Jesus overcame for us the greatest giant. He removed from us from us the greatest challenge, which was death. So when David he defeats the giant, when all of it was um, completed. So people ask David. They ask uh, each other, "Who is this David? Whose uh, son this young man is? Who is this youth?" And Jesus once asked the disciples and asked, "Who men say that I am?" And a few disciples said one thing, others said another. But there was a young man there. They had a revelation. He said. You are the Christ, the Son of the Living God. And everyone wants to know who was the father of David. Who is the father of David? Who's, who's, who is this uh, kid, son of? And my brand, when we uh, are able to reach a victory in the Lord, and every rich victory that we are able to reach, every deliverance, every blessing that we receive, is to promote a, a single thing. It's to promote the glory of God in our lives. The glory of God in the midst of the church. People wanted to know who was David's father. Who was the father of this young man? Who was the father of David? The father, the father of David is Jesse. Who is the father of the brother and the sister? The father of the brother and the sister is God, the Lord, the Lord. Uh, Lord of Hosts. Who they wanted to know who was David? David was Pilonite. David was the one who was born in Bethlehem. He came from the house of the bread, the house of the food. Jesus was born in, in the house of the bread, the house of the food. So Jesus is the food for our souls. We were born also in Bethlehem. We were also born in the house of bread. We also belong to the same project. And it is interesting, my brother, that at that day, the day of the defeat of the giant, the word says there was a man called Jonathan. Jonathan, he made a covenant with David when he saw the deliverance that the Lord had given when he saw what God had done through the life of David, Jonathan decided to have a covenant with this young man, with this individual. The Bible says that Jonathan, he loved David like he, he loved his own soul. And when man discovers what Jesus has done on their behalf and their benefit, when man finds out and becomes aware of what God through Jesus has already done in their lives, the deliverance that was given, the conquest that they have been able to achieve, the, the blessing that came to them through David and through Jesus, when man becomes aware and this understanding, man wants to establish a covenant, he wants to make a pact. And this, all the project of God is like this. Man comes to do this. So God wants us to understand that we need every day to establish a covenant, an alliance, an agreement with God. The word said that there was there a covenant, there was there a pact. And the desire of the Lord is exactly, is exactly this. This covenant, this pact, this alliance through Jesus 
may be present in our lives. And the word says that because Jonas loved him like his own soul. You know why he loved they like uh, love him as his own soul? Because Jonas Jonas Jonathan found something. Because before loving David, Jonathan loved David loved him. We loved God because love God loved us first. Jonathan only began to love David after the giant was defeated. And we only love God after the enemy of our souls is destroyed by Jesus. Because before this, we don't love God. We only love the Lord after our salvation, after our covenant, our pact with the Lord. That's when the love of God comes, love to God comes. So here's, we have this recognition of what Jesus has done in the cross of Calvary. I love Jesus because He loved me first, because He delivered me from death. He delivered me from condemnation, because He removed the confrontation of the enemy that was upon my life, because He delivered me from humiliation. So there was this covenant, and He loved Him as His own soul. He liked David so much, and He loved him as much as, his, uh, as He loved Himself. And when we, we we have received two commandments from Jesus, God gave ten commandments, and then through Jesus, two commandments. And the two commandments of Jesus are love God, uh, love God, and then love your neighbor like your yourself. So it is interesting that Jonathan loved himself in the same way that Jonathan loved himself. He began to love God. And that's interesting. Because there are people that don't love themselves. But if I don't love myself, how can I love God? How can I love my neighbor if I don't lo even love him myself? And that, that's interesting. And Jesus said, you need to love your neighbor like you love yourself. And many times we don't understand this. People there are people that don't love themselves. And when we don't love ourselves, we cause harm to ourselves. And when we don't love ourselves, we also don't have the means to love the, our neighbor. So then we harm our neighbor. But when we love ourselves and want the best for our lives, then we begin to understand the meaning of the love to our neighbor. So what I don't want for my life, I also don't want to the life of my neighbor. I don't want to be harmed, so that I don't want to harm my neighbor. The word that I don't want to hear, I also am not going to say. And that is interesting. And the Bible says that Jonathan, he loved David like himself, as his own soul. And the Bible also speaks of the soul. It was a love in spirit. It was not in the flesh. Sometimes people confuse this verse. He loved him like his, as his own soul. So the, the soul of Jonathan, Jonathan was linked to the soul of David. It was the spirit of God communicated with the spirit of man. So this connection is not a physical connection. It's a spiritual connection. Because the spirit is what is going what is going to heaven is going to eternity and the bible says my brethren that in that day in this covenant this agreement the word says that jonathan he emptied himself what is emptying himself is, is taking stuff away is, is to give yourself so he took his his the cape that he had over himself. So, the cape is related to protection. The cape protected from the sun, the, the, the rain, uh, the, the weather. So, he removed the cape and gives it to David. The cape of Jonathan was not just any cape, it was not the cape of Bartimaeus. 
Because Bartimaeus also had a cape. He was on the side of the road. He was blind. He begged. But when Jesus called him, he left the cape and followed Jesus. He went to Jesus and received the blessing. But the cape of Jonathan was not like the cape of Bartimaeus. It was the cape of a prince. So he removed the cape of prince because Jonathan was prince because the son of Saul, he was the son of a king, and son of a king is a prince. So he takes the cape of a prince and gives to David. And he takes his own robes and give them to David. The garments of John were, were garments of a prince. They were not garments like mine or yours. His robes were like the prince. So then he takes the, the robes of prince and gave it to David. And he takes his own sword and gives to David. He takes his belt and gives to David. And he also his, takes his bow and give it to David. So he gave to David five things. The cape, the rope, the sword, the arch, and the belt. The belt speaks of a justice. Justice speaks of the truth. Jesus said, I am the truth. He takes the sword, which is, which is the word. He takes the ar arch. What is the, what is the bow? Man, well, the bow means to uh, reach from afar. It speaks of prayer. He moves. He removes the ropes, which speaks of of salvation. And he also takes the cape, which he speaks of uh, protection. So that here. It speaks of the five characteristics of the ministry that he gives to David. He gives to Jesus. Because when he saw David, he, he realized and said to himself, David, you're not just any person, you are a prince. And I want to give you the attributes of a prince. So he transfers to David the garments of the prince, the sword of the prince, the, the cape of the prince, the, the bow of the prince, and, and the sword of the prince. So what does that mean? He said, no, David, I'm not a prince. You are the prince. You are the prince. This garment, they are in me, but they are not mine. They belong to you. And that's the secret. When we have this meeting with the Lord, when we make this covenant with the Lord, we understand the following. That Jesus is, is the Prince. He is the marvelous, marvelous Counselor, Mighty God, Father of Eternity, Prince of Peace. Marvelous God, Counselor, Marvelous Counselor, Mighty God, Father of Eternity, Prince of Peace. So from this day forward, I'm not the Prince of Jonathan, uh, Prince Jonathan that is going to give you orders, David, but from this point forward, you are my Prince, and I am your subject, I'm your servant. And it's detaining, my brethren, that all the relationship that happened, that communication, all this exchanging, this understanding was based on one single thing. Why did Jonathan do this? And I want to ask you, my brethren, why did he do it? You know why? Because Jonathan loved David. And that's why David received those gifts received all those attributes that were in the life of Jonathan because he knew that it was for love. It was a recognition for what David had done for him 
in, in his entire house because David delivered the house of Saul. And when we understand that David, who was the Lord Jesus, he delivered our house, delivered our home, delivered us from death, for gratitude, for love of God, we tell to the Lord Jesus, you are the prince, and I am your servant, your subject. You are not just anyone, you are a prince. Yes, I'm going to give all those things here from this day forward. I want to serve you. And I'm going to serve you not because of an obligation, but as an option, as my choice for love, because I recognize, because you are the prince of my life for the deliverance since like you have given me. And Jonathan removed the cape that he had upon himself and gave it to David. And also the the garments, his belt, his or, his bow, and his sword. Now, brethren, we need to give all of this to David. The cape is a protection. You know why? Because our protection now is the Lord. It's the Lord, the one who protects us, the deliver us, is the Lord of hosts. We need to give our your garments. You know why? Because we are going to receive new garments. The garments of salvation. The garments of uh, praise of a uh, anguished soul. So I also gave him uh, the sword. You know, because our weapons are no longer uh, common weapons. They are not physical weapons. Our weapons are now spiritual weapons. He also gave his bow. So what re reached from afar. So the sister mentioned prayer. Because now all my prayer is going to be in the name of Jesus. He is the one who is going to overcome all my battles. And Jonathan gave to David also his belt, which is speak of truth, which is speak of justice of God. And a certain individual in the past, he asked, what is truth? And a governor from my city, from my state in Bahia, in Brazil, he once said on the Congress, he asked on the Congress the same thing, what is truth? Who is the truth? I'm the truth, the path, and the, um, the so now we have on our be our belts truth. And the truth is only one, and in, in truth I say, because many people sometimes think that, that what they are going through, what they are seeing is the truth, but it is not truth. The truth is Christ. I am the truth. So then, from that moment forward, Jonathan began to live and walk in uh, the truth, which is the, the Lord Christ Jesus. And in truth, he found the project of, that God had for his life and then for his household and for the entire Israel. And Jonathan removed the cape that was upon himself, and also the garments, his sword, his belt, and his bow. And a few days, we mentioned this, and to give into the Lord, leave everything that you have, and come and follow me. And that's what Jonathan did. He left behind everything that he had in order to follow Jesus, to follow David, because David, because Jonathan loved David. Amen? Let's sing a song. But you're not going to sing.
Senhor vai dar a bênção apostólica para dar um espacinho ali para a mulher ficar. Glória a Deus. Amen. We're going to have intercession for the service tonight. Lord, we're wanting to see to you in favor of the service tonight. I ask you, Lord, that the God, God, that from this moment you may be operating with might for the service tonight so that you may be using the lives that you may, Lord, help us to evangelize and to seek, speak of this God whom we serve to those who need salvation for blessing. We ask you, Lord, operate in, a prof in the prophetic service, bless, give the means for your people to come to your house and manifest your power so that your glory may be done in this place. Bless the praises, bless the instrumentalists, bless your word, so that it may come up on your hearts. Lord, we are needy. We need your direction, Lord. Give your, the revelation of the Holy Spirit to, uh, to us, Lord. We pray to you in the name of Jesus. What am I going to give to the Lord? Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Glory to God. I invite the church to stand up. We're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. I'm going to praise you because we can learn more and more from you, Lord. Because you have visited us in a special way. I want to praise the Lord because when we wake up, when we lay down, because no moment you have left us alone, Lord, we don't deserve, Lord. Who are we, Lord, to be loved for, by you, Lord? But you loved us in a special way, Lord. We praise the Lord for everything that you have done for us. We have no word to thank you uh, enough, Lord. We praise in the name of Jesus. Lord, eternal Father, we place before your altar the, our children, timidity, and adolescents. We plead, Lord, that your, lands, your hands may be upon their lives, protecting them, delivering them, giving them health. For love of each one of them, you may bless the parents also. So in everything, Lord, your name may be glorified. Give grace, power, and and authority, and revelation, so that and direction by the Holy Spirit, and give them health, so that every day may may do your work, Lord. Take us home under your protection, Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus. In your name, we say that the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal, both good and eternal Father, and the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit, be with the people of God now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The service is over. And I'd like to remind that we are in the month of October, a month of dedication, a month in which we celebrate the uh, uh, religious reformation, the Protestant Reformation. We pray that the Lord may give us signs so that this month may be a month of feast, of adoration, glorification, and thankfulness to the Lord. Because this is a moment that the Lord reserves, a month in the year. We spend eight, uh, 11 months asking so one month in a month in a year we glorify the lord so this is this is uh, this is the day of glorification every service is geared towards glorifying the lord for all the benefits that he has given us and this week the, the first week was uh, early dawns and to th this month this week of a uh, uh, week of consecra uh, consecration from nine and uh, until the end of the service. Amen. So, meeting of the youth. 6.15 afternoon of the afternoon, we have a youth meeting and adolescents and all the brethren that want to participate. And I say the peace of the Lord to everyone.